Um, so if you're broke and don't have a house, don't have a car, don't have a job, you're not really in a position to advise me in my life. Um, and I look at that for everything. But when you look at guys like uh, Warren Buffett or Manesh Papai or some of these other guys that are out there, and you look at the financial education that's being put out in so many different circles, I always ask myself, would Warren Buffett do that? And, and if the answer is probably not, or if Manesh Papai or any of these other guys, I go, yeah, that might not be the smartest course. of I, I, I even had a guy, it's so funny, last night tell me that he gets a 70% ROI on his money. And I go, really? So you're mean to tell me that you're getting a return on your investment almost three times the amount of Warren Buffett? How much money do you make? I mean, how much are you worth? <laughs> If, you, if you're telling me one of the greatest investors of all time who's coming in at about 20, 25% and you're doing almost three times what he does, you should be a billionaire. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. Yeah, and, you know, truth be told, you know, that, that 20% is not all the time either. So you know, that, that's, right, his, right. That's, his, that's his high end. It's not, it's not his average. Uh, and yeah, you know, I I love that you're kind of pointing all of that out because you know we we shouldn't uh, be taking advice from people that don't have what we want. Uh, it, it's like you know you you should model yourself after the people that that have what you want. They've they've achieved where you want to go. They've they built what you'd like to build, and, and those are the people you surround yourself with. Uh, like yep. the, the saying that we Absolutely. are the sum of the five we're the sum of the five or six people that we surround ourselves with. Yeah, you know, we should really think about that. And, you know, don't surround yourself with, you know, broke people with, you know, with broken lives and, and a broken mindset because that is, it's going to bleed over into your life. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's just not worth it. That's, it's absolutely true too. Like if you look at your friends, you, yeah. I, I heard it said this way, if nine of your friends are broke, you're the 10th. Mm hmm. So yeah, I, I like that. I'll, I'll, I'll probably borrow that and, and use it in one of my, one of my speeches. Steal it. I uh, stole it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, cool. Cool. So uh, as far as uh, for some of the people that are, are listening, um, do you believe that it's important for them to, to create some sort of a strategy uh, for, for both their personal life and their business life uh, in order to, to achieve the success that you're talking about? Oh yeah. They, they've got to have a strategy, man. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, an idea without a plan is really just a fantasy. Um, you know, you've got to, you got to make plans. You gotta, you gotta, gotta be able to evaluate where you're at and where you're going. And I, and I tell it this way, if I picked you up right now and said, Hey, uh, hop in the plane with me, I dropped you off without a destination uh, or where you're going to start from and said, Hey, I want you to get to New York city without a compass, without a map, without talking to anybody. Go. Mm -hmm. Could you get there? And the answer is no, because you don't know where you're at. You gotta, you gotta have your starting point and your exit point. If you don't have both, then you can't, you can't accomplish your goals. Uh, you know, there's another piece of wisdom that says, um, you see the vision, write it down so that you can run with it. Um, and that's really about a plan. Um, if you don't make a plan for your vision, for your dreams, for your hopes, then you're never really going to accomplish them unless you just stumble on them by luck. Yeah. And, and I like that you're, you're referring to, you know, having the plan because, you know, so often I, I hear of people that, you know, especially, you know, business owners, they'll, they'll start a business. They don't really have a good concrete business plan for themselves. They, they haven't gone through uh, that whole process uh, and, you know, sometimes the drudgery, but, you know, it is what it is. You, you need to do it. Uh, don't have even the financial plan put into place of how they're going to execute the business plan and then wonder why, you know, one, two, three years down the road, they're having to liquidate all of their assets because something happened and they weren't prepared for it. And, yep. you know, so many people is just like, you know, I don't, I don't need a business plan. It's like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm shocked at that. I'm shocked about how many people actually feel that way. Yeah. Well, the, the problem with the business plan though, is it seems to be very difficult to get somebody who actually knows how to write one. Um, mm -hmm. and then is not going to like rob you over writing it for you. 
Um, well, that's true. It's, um, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for almost 30 years. Um, I haven't, I haven't worked, um, at, at a nine to five job in, in, you know, since I basically, since I left the army and, and I can count on my hand, the number of people that I would actually feel confident and comfortable with to write a business plan for me. Um, half of a hand, half a hand, really. Yeah. It's like one or two guys. So it's, but it's an important piece of that puzzle, especially if you're talking about something that takes a lot of assets up front to get going. Right. Yeah. And, and that's very true that you, know, you, you do want to vet whoever you're working with and, and, you know, vet them very, very rigorously because if you wouldn't trust them to keep your kids, when you go to the store, you shouldn't trust them to keep your, you know, your business strategy. And, and likewise, you know, someone who's going to be helping you with your finances. If they can't, if you don't trust them to, to watch your children, why would you trust them to watch your money? Yeah. So come you know, on. just be very careful about that. Yep. So what would be uh, some of the specific roadblocks maybe for, for a new entrepreneur, you know, since you do have, you know, like, like you were just mentioning, uh, the 30 years of experience, what were some of those roadblocks that you had warned a new entrepreneur to look out for? Yeah, I think uh, the naysayers. Um, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I've been fortunate enough to work for the army as a contractor of my own company for a long time. And when I first started fighting professionally back in the nineties, um, uh, there were members of my family and friends that were like, Hey, you need to give up on this because this is never going to make you any money. Um, you know, and I wasn't fighting to make money. I was fighting because it's what I enjoyed. And I just didn't listen to them. Um, and because I didn't listen to them, I ended up just being fortunate enough to work for one of the most elite units in the world. And I have for the last 20 years. And it became a business. Um, and so it doesn't matter what your entrepreneurial endeavor is. Uh, I always ask people this, would you do it for free if you weren't getting paid for it? And if they say no, then I say you probably ought not to go into business for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, like the saying goes, uh, if you do what you love, then you never work a day in your life. So I, I think that that kind of pairs up with what you're just mentioning. That you know, if if it's something that you really love, then you're not going to care about you know the financial side of it. You know, you're doing yeah. it because it, it's really you know making someone else better. Yeah, it's fulfilling you on on a on a level beyond. I mean, of course, we have to have money to survive, but I, I say that because most entre- entrepreneurs don't start out the shoot making money. It takes time to build it into where it's bringing you uh, income in such a way that you can support yourself, your family, etc. So I, I tell people, if, don't listen to the naysayers. And if you wouldn't do it for free, don't do it. It's, it's good advice. Good advice. So, you know, for our listeners, you know, that's, that's one of those, you know, take note on that one because it's pretty smart. You know, 90% of entrepreneurs, you know, don't, don't succeed. You know, they end up failing. So, you know, make sure that you, you know, you can stick, you know, stick it and be able to stick it out because, you know, it's not going to be an easy journey. You know, it's not for everybody. Yep. Entrepreneurship is hard, man. <laughs> and, and it kind of goes back to that scarcity mindset you were talking about. There's just so many people that have been trained and brainwashed by the educational system to be somebody else's slave when they see somebody else reaching for the stars and reaching for more. They want to tear them down. So <laughs> it's crazy, yeah. man. Uh, it is. Absolutely. We used to live for the American dream. Yeah. Now, uh, since you're talking about uh, the failing, uh, what do you think most common reason for, for entrepreneurs uh, that they fail or just give up? Um, I think if I had to say the most common reason, um, is because they don't have the, the audacity to stick it through that the dream that they had did not mean enough to take them through the suffering that every entrepreneur has to go through. Um, okay. and what I mean by that is that the reward at the end of the tunnel wasn't meaningful enough. Money only motivates you so far. Um, you know, because money can be found in a variety of different ways. So there has to be some sort of deep meaning and driven 
uh, reason for you to be want to do this. Uh, it's kind of like what we used to talk about in the army, right? Uh, leadership and loyalty uh, is what really is going to make guys charge the hill for you. Punishment will never make me give up my life for you. That's true. Um, it's because I love you and I'm loyal to you and we're going to go take this thing together. Uh, we're probably going to die, but I'm going to at least die at your side. Um, hey, you're going to get an Article 15 and get kicked out of the Army is not enough to make charge a, a, a gun nest. Uh, it's got to be the same thing in, in the entrepreneurial aspect. If you're not doing this for some deep-seated reason, for the well-being and the inheritance of my children, uh, so that my wife and I could have the life that we've always dreamed of. It can't just be to get rich because that won't carry you through the suffering. So it's got to be a, a, a deeply meaningful thing to you. Yeah, yeah I, I completely agree with you on that. Uh, so what are some of the, the supporting resources that uh, these the new entrepreneurs that are that are out there, um, or even somebody that thinking about going into business, uh, what are some of those support and resources that they should look for that's going to position them in a better way so that they, they might be able to find that success? I think probably, and I read it every year, probably one of the best resources I've ever been given is how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. Um, it doesn't matter what business you are in unless that business is completely automated and has no humor interaction. If you don't figure out how to remember people's names, to be genuinely interested in people and to network with people, you're going to fail. Um, um, all of business is about networking and meeting other people's needs. And I've never read a better book than that other than probably the Bible. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good one. Uh, now, as far as uh, veteran entrepreneurs, is there a specific uh, set of resources that you found that, that maybe is targeted to, to the veterans or is it pretty much the same as, as it would be for a civilian? Um, so I would still make the same recommendation on the book for vets. Yeah probably even more so for vets. I mean, of course, we're both in the vet tribe and I love what Andrew's doing and the way that he helps the, the veterans. So I would say that they should get into the vet tribe. I've made so many meaningful contacts there and so many opportunities I don't think I would have had because people, I, I guess it's just that, you know, like regardless of what you did in the military, you're still talking about less than 1% of the, of the population of the U.S. of, you know, uh, and then if you talk about like infantry special forces, you're talking about even less than that. You know, so, you know, you're talking about maybe a 10th of the population. And so regardless of what you did in the military, it creates a bond that, that civilians just simply will never really understand. And like, even if I don't know you, if the minute you tell me and you can, you know, speak my language of being a veteran, I'm, f I'm far more willing to help you than I would just somebody else. Uh, even if I didn't know you. Um, and so I think the vet tribe does a great job at that. I would definitely recommend that as a resource. I would still probably recommend how to win friends and influence people first, but, uh, the vet tribe has just done so much for me. I would recommend it. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> you know, since we're, we're both people with, uh, both, uh, kind of have some of the same value systems, uh, how do you incorporate your values into your into your business and uh, how would you advise other people to do that? You know, in, in a way yeah. that, that's going to, to really, you know, do, do justice. Yeah. So, um, you know, when I was fighting professionally, the Japanese nicknamed me the fighting preacher and people would always ask me, are you a Christian fighter? And I would just be like, no, I'm a fighter. And they would ask me later on, you know, are you a Christian this or a Christian that? And I go, no, I'm just this you know and and i do that for a very specific reason it's not because i'm not i'm trying to separate myself from the label of being a christian it's that i'm trying to separate myself from label um my life should reflect my value system and that goes for anything that i'm doing period uh it doesn't matter if it's traveling if it's fighting if it's going to the military base and training soldiers i try as much as possible i don't do it perfectly but I try to represent who I am and, and be honest to my own value system and have integrity to my own value system. And my hope, uh, St. Francis of Assisi said this, 
He said, preach at all times and when necessary, you 